our government's plan is fiscally responsible. AAA rated. <laughs> like I said, it's great to be back here in St. Thomas. It's great to be here to talk about child care because we really get to connect the dots on what we're doing to build strong communities. As you know, in 2011, when a major auto assembly plant closed here in St. Thomas, a lot of people lost their jobs. And the previous Conservative government basically threw up their hands and kind of shrugged. But we have been working for eight years to bring back manufacturing jobs to Canada and build those manufacturing jobs for the future in areas where it's going to feed not just jobs, but careers in strong communities right across the country. And it's happening right here because Volkswagen has chosen St. Thomas to build their first ever overseas battery factory. On top of creating and securing good jobs for the community, well, we want to make sure workers know that we're here to support them and their families. This is why we've been investing in $10 a day childcare. The federal government, together with provinces, territories, and indigenous governments, is doing something historic that has never been done before. We're building a Canada-wide, high-quality, affordable child care system. Le but de notre système de garderie, c'est d'offrir des frais abordables pour les familles et des bonnes conditions de travail. The purpose of our daycare system is to have affordable and quality system with educators. And as we build new houses throughout the country, we do take into account the needs of families so that they will have those daycare services where they live and work. Thousand kids have already benefited from affordable childcare because of the investments we've made. Some families are saving over $14,000 per child per year because of the investments we've made. When we talk about fairness for every generation, this is what we mean. Now, we're working with provinces and territories to reach agreements to ensure that even more families have access to affordable childcare. Here in Ontario, we'll invest over $200 million in childcare infrastructure to create more spaces and greater access for Ontario families. This investment will help Ontario reach our goal of creating 86,000 new childcare spaces by 2026. Jobs are not easy, but you're there for our kids day in and day out. I want you to know that we're here for you as well. When we created a Canada-wide child care plan, all of our agreements with provinces and territories had funding for workforce improvements, including our $10 billion agreement with Ontario. Right across the country, work is being done on wages, pensions and retention. And we're confident that working conditions will improve for educators and staff here in Ontario as well. Similar to the programs we're already offering for rural doctors and nurses. This will help attract and retain talent where it's needed most. When Conservative politicians say they'll vote against the budget, this is what they're voting against. They're voting against ten, more $10 a day childcare spaces. They're voting against more support for educators. Affordable childcare means more parents, especially moms, don't have to choose between their family and their career. This is something that every politician should be able to get behind but the Conservative Party continues to vote against it. When we attract a company like Volkswagen that invests to produce EV batteries here in St. Thomas, we grow the economy and we fight climate change. When we invest in childcare, we support hardworking families and the economy. Social policy is economic policy is climate policy. Being able to offer the best start in life to kids like here at the Station Views YMCA in St. Thomas, and being able to tell them, if you want to grow up to be an engineer at the auto plant in your community, well, there'll be a job waiting for you. This is our vision, so that every generation can have a real and fair chance at success. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. Now, I'm very happy to pass it over to the Deputy Prime Minister. Christian. I'll figure it out. There we he is a little bit taller than I am, though. Thank you, Prime Minister. 
Okay, well, thank you very much, Prime Minister. I am so glad to be here with the Prime Minister, with my colleagues, Jenna Suds and Marcy Yen, with Peter Fragiscados and Ariel Cayabaga. And I am especially glad to be here with the team from the YMCA, um, with Andrew, and with the incredible early learning and childcare workers who are here. I had a chance to meet an amazing woman called Danielle. She's been working in early learning and childcare for more than 20 years. She told me it's the best job in the world because it's so important. And we are so lucky to have people like Danielle be raising our kids across the country and giving them the best possible start in life. And Andrew will be glad to hear that she also told me how great it is to work in this amazing new early learning and child care center. It's just eight months old and it's been designed with kids in mind. If you look around, windows are at kid height. Um, there are lots of natural surfaces for children to touch and see. This is exactly the kind of place where we want St. Thomas's children, where we want Canada's children to grow and learn and flourish. Young women all too often have to choose between having a family and having a career. That is just not right. It's not fair. And our government is changing that. That's why three years ago, we did something truly historic and launched our Canada-wide system of affordable early learning and child care. And we have delivered. Today, child care fees are down by at least 50% across Canada. In eight provinces and territories, child care costs just $10 a day. And this year, families here in Ontario are saving up to $8,500 per child. Early learning and childcare is feminist social policy, and we are proud of that. It is also feminist economic policy. Our affordable system of early learning and childcare has already enabled a near record high labor force participation rate of 85.5% for working age Canadian women. And that is driving jobs and growth for us all very fastest rate of growth in 2025, tied with the U.S. And last month, Moody's, one of the leading credit ratings agencies, reaffirmed Canada's AAA credit rating with a stable outlook. Moody's also predicts that over the medium term, Canada will see stronger economic growth than some other AAA economies, and that inflation will be near the Bank of Canada's midpoint target of 2%. These are really powerful economic proof points. They show that Canada's economy is strong and resilient. They show that our economic plan is fiscally responsible. And that really matters, because it means that we can afford to make the investments that Canada needs and create the good jobs that Canadians need. It means the federal government can responsibly invest and borrow at lower costs, as can other orders of government and Canadian businesses. It also shows that Pierre Polyev would rather make inflammatory statements and mislead Canadians than admit the truth, that our government's plan is fiscally responsible, AAA rated. The reality is that the Conservative leader just doesn't want to make the necessary investments in early learning and childcare, in building more homes faster, or in growing our economy with investments like the historic VW investment here. He doesn't want to ask the wealthiest Canadians to pay their fair share so that we can deliver these opportunities that younger Canadians need and deserve. Super close. Hi, Andrew from CBC News. Uh, I want to ask regarding the crash on Highway 401 recently that killed an infant and his grandparents. 
The driver pursued by police was out on bail. He was facing a series of criminal charges. Uh, Pierre Polyev blames this on what he calls Justin Trudeau and the Liber Liberal government's catch and release laws. What do you make of this claim and what do you make of the fact that this driver was out on bail? Uh, well, thank you for the question. I think that the heart of every single Canadian has been broken uh, reading about that uh, terrible, terrible accident, um, hearing the grief of the parents. Um, I, uh, I just want to start by saying um, that um, I hope the parents and the family knows um, that all of us are crying with them, and I'm sure Mother's Day was an especially difficult day for them. Um, I do also want to say, I think it is really awful to try to score cheap partisan political points off of a family's grief. Um, I don't think that's a very Canadian way. Uh, our government has tightened bail laws, and that is the right thing to do. It's absolutely essential for all Canadians to be safe in their communities, and it is absolutely essential you know, for a family driving down the highway um, people visiting, grandparents visiting, to feel safe. Uh, one more time. Um, uh, CBC News is now reporting that Honda Canada's investment in southwestern Ontario will include a billion dollar lithium ion separator facility in Port Colborne. How much will the federal government be contributing specifically to this plant and how many jobs and economic spin-offs for the Niagara region are you counting on in return? Okay, thank you for that question. Um, and one of the reasons that I am so happy to be here in St. Thomas is to see with my own eyes a community that has not too long ago experienced a really devastating economic blow, a community that knows what it is to lose jobs and to be feeling like you're in decline to now be a community that is vigorously growing. Um, it's wonderful to see, and you can see it on the street. And we really believe, you know, when you think about what is our economic plan, our economic plan is fairness for every generation, with a particular focus on millennials and Gen Z. It is about investing in housing, it is about investing in making life more affordable. It is about investing in economic growth and doing all of that in a fiscally responsible way. And I think what you're seeing in St. Thomas with you know, VW, jobs, a community growing a future, and at the same time social infrastructure like this amazing daycare center, to me that epitomizes our economic plan in action and what we need across the country. Um, when it comes to Honda, uh, what we're seeing now is our economic plan when it comes to the next generation of cars, when it comes to EVs, is working. Canada is now rated by Bloomberg ahead of China as the country with the best full supply chain in electric batteries. That is a remarkable thing, and we're now seeing more and more companies are coming to Canada. With Honda, the federal support to that remarkable investment is through our investment tax credits, including a new full supply chain investment tax credits, design, investment tax credit, designed to encourage exactly the kind of investment you're talking about, which is have companies invest across the supply chain so we can take advantage of the fact that we have the natural resources 
We know how to process them. We know how to turn them into batteries and cars. And what we want to see is more and more companies taking advantage of that full supply chain. We have investment tax credits. Those are fully detailed in the budget. And that is the support that Honda is getting from the federal government. And maybe I'll just take a final opportunity on investment tax credits to say, I am really hopeful that the first two investment tax credits um, which are part of Bill C-59 will be passed into law this month, and that two more will be passed into law by the end of the summer. We need all parties to help us in that work. And it's not, it's not some abstract thing. Getting these credits passed into law is what we need to make investments like the Honda investment real to get that money coming into our country and to get the jobs that it brings. Next question. Everybody's so polite. <laughs> uh, uh, hi, I'm Ben Harrietha uh, with 980 CFP All out of London. Um, just pivoting to the $10 a day child care, I know, uh, you know some of the provinces have got uh, where we've hit that $10 a day mark, but in Ontario, we're still a little bit above it. Uh, when abouts can we expect to see that, uh, hit, uh, see us hit that $10 a day uh, average in the province? Because I know people are waiting uh, to kind of hear that. Um, I'll say a couple of things and then we're gonna turn it over to Jenna, who's directly responsible. Um, but let me just say, you are so right. People are waiting for Ontario to hit $10 a day. This is a system that is making a huge difference in the lives of families and of children. Families already in Ontario are saving $8,500 a day, and that has been getting people through a really tough time and providing huge support to our economy. We do need to get down to $10 a day. The federal government has done our part. We have $10 billion on the table for early learning and childcare in Ontario. And I want to emphasize, in addition to getting to $10 a day, it is really important to have more spaces and really important to have phenomenal early learning and child care educators, like a woman that we talked to and really inspired us, Danielle. You know, this is a career. These are people who are raising young Canadians and we need to pay them appropriately and there is money there for that. Now I'm gonna see if Jenna wants to make any more comments. Thank you, Krisha. Thank you very much. Thank you for the question. Um, as uh, as the Deputy Prime Minister has very adequately said, uh, we have an agreement in place with Ontario, $10.2 billion that we are funding them over five years. Uh, with that comes the commitment on behalf of Ontario to create 86,000 new spaces and to get to $10 a day by March 2026. So as we all see, we hear from parents here in Ontario, we reached 50% reduction on fees. On average, it's about $23 a day here in Ontario, saving families about $8,500 uh, each and every year per child. Uh, but we need to see the progress, of course, continuing to create new spaces um, as we work towards that end goal of getting to $10 a day. Uh, as has been said, we've uh, made these investments. We've made more announcements today, another $200 million uh, towards uh, infrastructure dollars to create more spaces uh, with the province. Uh, but of course, we need the province uh, to step up and do their part as well. Thank you. No, I'm all good. <laughs> Hi there, Brian Williams, London Free Press. Um, seeing as we are here in St. Thomas today, I'm curious about how this region in particular, so St. Thomas, London area, how will we be affected by, you know, what's being announced today? Um, and, uh, you know, what does, uh, what do you guys see well, for the future in yeah, St. Thomas? Say, or in it's, it's about, the area? Yeah. Why, why don't sure. you save yeah. it and then I'm happy to say one. Yeah. Sure, thank you. And, and thank you very much for the question. It's wonderful to be here in St. Thomas and, um, in this incredible center. And frankly, I think this is just one example of what is possible and what is being created through the investments that our government is making alongside uh, the province. So what can, what can we expect? 
Um, as I said, 86,000 new spaces across Ontario. We've seen about 23,000 so far be announced. Um, so you can expect to see more of this. Uh, as long as we have the province continuing to do their part, we'll continue to see new centres be created, new spaces in existing centres be created, and ultimately getting to $10 a day for families across this country. And I would just add, um, you know, what we really believe in is you need, and, and what you see in our economic plan is really about fairness for every generation. And what does that mean for St. Thomas? It means investing in jobs of the future. You've seen that with the massive VW investment, which is transformational for your community. And like, it's just beautiful to see. Um, we know though, making those investments in the economy has to be supported by making investments in social infrastructure. It has to be supported with investments in early learning and childcare. It has to be supported with investments in housing. And you have to do it in a fiscally responsible way. And that's what we're doing here in St. Thomas. That's what we're doing across the country. But the, the daycare, the early learning and childcare element it's essential for communities across the country. I think it's really essential for this community because you know, it's a good challenge to have in St. Thomas, the challenge of growth. We wanna be sure that St. Thomas has the support it needs to grow in a way that supports everyone. And that means early learning and childcare. Thanks. Next question. Hi, uh, Brian Bicknell from CTV News. I'm just wondering if you're concerned at all about uh, daycares that have uh, chosen not to go in this program or opted out of the $10 a day program because their operating costs are much higher than they expected. Um, again, I'll offer a couple of thoughts and then maybe Jenna wants to, wants to say more. Um, we really believe that Canadian families, and I would say, above all, Canadian women, need a national system of high quality early learning and child care. We need great early learning and child care, we need affordable learning and early learning and child care, and we need more early learning and child care. Um, we believe that public providers, not-for-profit providers, like the YMCA here, they do a fantastic job and they need to be central to what we're doing, central to our investments. There is a role for sure um, for private providers. It's, you see a lot of great, especially women-led, women entrepreneurs providing private childcare and that can be part of the system. The important thing though is to have a national system that we are investing in, that provinces and territories across the country invest in, because we need to be sure the care is really excellent. Um, we need to be sure that it is about early learning and the best possible environment for our kids. And, and look around here. We see that's what these kids are getting. We need to be sure that it's a system where the early learning and child care educators are paid well, that this is a career that rewards people doing one of the most important jobs in our society. And we need to be sure that the investment is at scale so we can have the places that Canadians need. And you know, think about the number Jenna cited, 86,000 more spaces in Ontario. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. Now, Jenna, I don't know if you want to add anything. Sure. Thank you. Um, it's an interesting question and you know I think it's important to actually point out I was speaking with uh, the municipal service organizer here who shared that a hundred percent of centers and providers here in St. Thomas have signed up and are part of our Canada-wide early learning uh, child care program. I think to a recent conversation I had with the service uh, provider in Peterborough similarly 98 percent in Ottawa 98%. So the reality on the ground is very, almost 100% of providers have been and are part of the Canada-wide early learning and childcare program. And I think it's important to point that out. Um, it's also important, of course, to worry when we hear of a provider that may be thinking about uh, not being a part of the program. 
Um, and I think that's a consequence, unfortunately, of um, you know, a delay of process with respect to the province of Ontario coming forward with a sustainable long-term funding formula for providers. Um, I've said it before and I'll say again, uh, the province is responsible to foster those relationships, to get input and to work with the providers and to flow the money so that providers have that sustainability and know that they can confidently continue to provide high quality services, but also to grow the number of spaces. We know here in Ontario, there's 300,000 children already benefiting from our high quality, affordable spaces, but we need more. And so the work continues. Thank you. Uh, just as a follow-up, you mentioned the provincial government. Um, of course, here in Ontario, they were one of the last to sign on to this program. Are you confident that they are all in on, on this uh, wholeheartedly? Uh, I haven't been told otherwise, and I would suggest every conversation that I have with parents here in Ontario tells me how important this work is, tells me what a difference it's made in their lives, saving them thousands of dollars each and every year. Um, I continue to engage uh, at, the, at all provincial levels, provincial, territorial and Indigenous governments to ensure that progress is being made. We are seeing progress across this country. Almost uh, three quarters of a billion families are benefiting in this country from our, our nationwide uh, system. Uh, so we'll continue to work with provinces and territories. Uh, obviously, here in Ontario, we continue to engage, and we expect that the province will engage with the, the uh, providers here as well. Okay. 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 Well, thank you very much, everyone, for being here. Really appreciate it. Appreciate your time. Appreciate your questions. Thank you. Thanks so much.